across the River Wonsum to the southeasterly tip of England is the Isle of Thanet. The affluent and retired live here by the sea. But there's another Thanet. Factories, ferry and airport have closed. It's the most economically deprived part of Kent. UKIP leader Nigel Farage has chosen to stand here in South Thanet at the general election. I think, I think that you've got a good chance because I was talking to Mum about it the other day. Yeah. And she runs exactly the same thing. So hopefully you'll pick up loads and loads of votes. And We're trying hard. Knock them dead. Thank you. But this film is not about the media savvy leader. It's about those normally hidden from the cameras. The local party members trying to come to terms with the move from fringe group to one challenging for power. <laughs> Great pleasure today. This is exactly how we should be having days. Yeah, no, no, no absolutely. Thank you. Happy, happy, happy 18. Well, yeah, well, happy birthday, Charlie. What I notice about the people in UKIP Thanet is there is a real passion and determination to get this job done well. And I'm, 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 I, I couldn't have a team anywhere, anywhere in England who I felt more comfortable with than these people. Over the coming months, these UKIP foot soldiers will have to face a media hungry for gaffes. And for a rapidly growing party which prides itself on free speech, it's never going to be easy. Are you a neo-Nazi? No, I'm not. Is your party made up of neo-Nazis and racists? I, for Christ's sake, I was never a member of the Gestapo. She has been told time and time again to keep her bloody mouth shut. In the main, they're foreigners. Oh, a lovely afternoon, isn't it? South Thanet UKIP has created a new post. They've invited Liz Langton Way to take it on. We could take them on the beach. It could be the toughest job in Thanet. Hello, boo-boo. We love Thanet. We run a sort of a dog hotel. Dogs come and stay with us as part of the family. I don't know. I also have another job, which is uh, the South Thanet press officer for UKIP. There's always issues that uh, come up and you try very hard to make sure that people don't say the wrong thing or that UKIP is presented in a very positive light. And, you know, it, sometimes it doesn't always work. <laughs> August. Liz has only been in her new post a few days, when a story about one of her charges breaks on local TV news. We filmed Janice Atkinson MEP on Friday to coincide with the announcement that the party leader, Nigel Farage, wants to stand as an MP in the area. How's business, Vince? It's been very good today, thank you. You OK, Far? You can clearly see her speaking to Vince and Far Mundy at their mobile food van. But later, with a cameraman filming elsewhere, we picked up this audio as Janice Atkinson spoke to another UKIP supporter. So that's good. We've got Far, who's... I don't know, she's a ting-tong from somewhere. Um. I wasn't there uh, on that day because I hadn't actually known that Janice was coming down. And I didn't hear anything about it until the following day. By that time, it was all over the place. So there wasn't... I, I was in contact with the, the head of media in London. And I said, I don't really know what to do. That's when they said, Liz, even if you'd been there, unless you had actually been standing beside her and said, no, you've got your mic on, you just, you couldn't stop it. Come on, mister, let's go. Retired businessman Martin Heal is chairman of the South Thanet branch of UKIP. Go this way. His dog, Dale, stays at Liz and James's hotel. I live on my own, and my dog, Dale. Yes. I was married for 16 years, but right now I find it very difficult to have to share decision making with anyone. Good morning, Dale. Hello. Good boy. Yeah. Well, see you later, James. Okay, Thank you. Bye bye. Martin runs the election campaign in South Thanet. It's held by the Conservatives, but if UKIP repeat their vote from the European elections, they would win here. Nigel's often said that, that uh, 
he's coming to stand in Thanet, not just because he feels he has a love of Thanet, but he has someone in Thanet who he feels can run a campaign for him. So I guess that was me. You know, I don't know how you do this, day in, day out, week in, week out. I could do it. Martin has been an organiser for several parties during his political career. But his past has come back to haunt him. He used to be in the National Front, an extreme right-wing political party. So I've just put, just put my name in it. You imagine I'm, I'm nearly 65 years old and every single article that relates to my personal name relates to one year and two months I spent in the National Front. I wasn't quite aware that uh, it was as extreme as they said. Uh, after, I think, a year and a half, my wife and I decided that it was not the right thing for me to do. So I left. They're trying to show UKIP to be this right-wing organisation infiltrated by the extreme right-wingers who... I, for Christ's sake, I was never a member of the Gestapo. I was not a member of the Stasi. I never served a term of imprisonment in my life. I was a fucking member of the, of the Conservative Party for 22 years. I was a member of the National Front for one year and two months. Why don't they just let it go? UKIP now stop past members of far-right parties from joining, but Martin signed up before the ban came in. I did say to my party that if they felt that I would be a distraction, I'd be happy to stand down and let someone else do it. They said, no, we're happy with what you're doing. We're happy to back you with what you're doing. We're happy to back you. Uh, when, when people like Nigel are prepared to stand shoulder to shoulder with me, uh, I'm happy with that. A lot of people in their 20s get involved with things. It happens. Why keep bringing it up when it's irrelevant to today's scenario? I first of all knew Liz and James when they looked after my dogs when I went away on holiday. And it, it's lovely that they can go there and be treated the same way as they are at home. One of Liz's most prominent charges is the outspoken branch secretary, District Councillor Roseanne Duncan. One of the things I really like about UKIP is that they are the defenders of free speech. And it's very, very important for me personally that we can say the things that we need to say. This is a lovely area. I've lived here most of my life, since I was three, in fact. I've lived in Cliftonville and Margate. There's quite a mix, bungalows and houses. There's lots of white-collar workers, retired, semi-retired. Very strong groundswell for UKIP. Like a lot of people in the UK, they want change. And we're now coming into Cliftonville West. When the summer holidays stopped being what people did and started going abroad in the uh, mid-60s, a lot of these guest houses couldn't afford to keep going, so they converted them into flats. There's a tremendous amount of immigrants here. They will come up the road that I grew up in. There we are. My father built these walls. It looks so, so uncared for. Um, I'm looking at the windows and the woodwork is falling out and it's, oh, it's just so sad. The police come around in twos, if not in cars. It really is a no-go area after dark. You get a lot of people hanging around in groups. In the main, they're foreigners. They are community-minded, they like to meet together, and so they stand outside. And you've got this constant noise of people speaking a foreign language, calling to each other, shouting to each other across the road. And, of course, the English people don't like it, causes friction. One of the reasons why UKIP is enjoying such popularity in this area, they want tight border controls. You just allow in the people whose skills you need. Immigration is a big issue locally. 
but Thanet actually has less immigrants than the national average. Curbing immigration is one of UKIP's key election policies, along with leaving the European Union. Chairman Martin Heal is promoting this election agenda around Thanet, so he's invited two local painter decorators to come and tell Liz their story. Hello. This is Liz, Liz Langton Waves, our press officer for, for Hello, Nigel Farage. Hello, Liz, how are you? Nice to meet you. Hello. Liz here is going to be asking you some questions because we feel that there may be a story for your benefit, but also for the benefit of other people in the same position. Of course. Yeah? Yeah. OK, I was working for the company every week or every couple of weeks. We was asking him how long we're going to be here. Yeah, you'll be here till January. Then it was February. And on last Sunday, we was told it was March. So we're all, oh, wonderful. We're all G'd up for it. So you think you thought last Sunday that you were going to get this work through till March? Through till March. On Tuesday we went into work and he said you're all finishing Friday. I said how come? He said we're getting Bulgarians in. Did he say today. why? No, but we know why. The gang leader was making them work from eight o'clock in the morning to eleven o'clock at night, for the making same money. them. For the same money. Right, well, okay. Yeah. Whereas we, obviously being English, we, we was leaving at 4, 4.30. You know, but we were still doing seven days a week, weren't we? Yeah. With an election fast approaching, that's dynamite, particularly yeah. in Ramsgate. Exactly. Yeah. This is why we've come to UKIP, because we think that they will do something about it. With, 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 with the other parties, it is just the same story. It doesn't matter who gets in, it's the same lies. They don't seem to listen to the no, people. No, they don't give. They don't care about us. She's got a sad face. Press release: Three Bulgarians taking jobs from local people. I was going to send it to the local press and see what the reaction is. The idea that the English people are actually being laid off in favour of, of foreign workers, I think, is very sad. I think it's important that people realise what's actually happening. Nobody picked up on Liz's story, but the press were keen to follow this. The BBC film a vote about Nigel Farage's suitability for power. On Twitter, UKIP South Thanet sees the location as provocative and tweets, perfect place to hold vote in front of a mosque in London. Problem is, the building in the background is actually Westminster Cathedral. And I'll call back in two minutes. Thank you. Uh, Martin, as chairman of the branch, has to deal with the fallout. What the innocent mistake <laughs> that, that seems to be going around the world? <laughs> All that we can say is that the local Twitter account was run by a long-serving member in good standing, who made a mistake. It's not a mistake that is going to change the course of UK history, or indeed the course of UKIP's success in the future. Uh, I'm sure she's very, indeed, the party's very sad that the mistake was made. It won't be happening again because Twitter has now been brought into the local branch of administration as opposed to being run by one person, which it had been. OK. Is that what you were looking for, is it? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye. They're only looking for the story. The, oh, the, the experts are looking for evil people. Oh, they mistook the cathedral for a mosque, my God. As it turns into a news story, the South Thanet branch issues a statement. I have got it wrong about the building, as was wrongly advised, and apologise. It was inevitably going to become a story because it was just such a bizarre scenario. You couldn't write it, you know, you just couldn't write it. November. Nationally, UKIP are riding high. By-election success in Clacton and Rochester means the party has its first two MPs. The next goal is getting Nigel Farage elected in Thanet. The leader is here for the day with his national team. To avoid Nigel meeting anti-UKIP protesters while campaigning, Martin has come up with a plan to divert the opposition. And it involves his deputy chairman. 
Trevor Shonk. You could do me a big favour, yeah. and you could perhaps let slip that Nigel's coming into town centre later on. That'd be really good. That'll keep him there, you say. On my stand. I need his Nigel mask. A little bit of misinformation. Doesn't do anybody any harm. A rumour is spread that the UKIP leader is coming to Ramsgate High Street. It's Trevor's job to act as a decoy, keeping the opposition there, waiting for Nigel. We're waiting for Farage, who's supposed to come. So that's why all these people are all saving up here. But... So far, you haven't won a parliamentary seat. You've won two people who were already members of parliament in the same constituencies in a by election. That's not winning a parliamentary seat. Let's see what happens in the general election. You, you've got no chance. This is where UKIP will end in Ramsgate and in Fanny. That will be the end. We will win. We will win. Final. We will win. Good old UKIP, get in there. Yeah, I'm Trev. I'm a. Right, I'm, 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 I'm a got the balls to stand up and say what people think. That's a lot of people lost, the, lost their bollocks, haven't they? So. It'd be nice to see Nigel because the, uh, if you're going to stand in the planet south, you've got to be here amongst the people, the people that you're going to represent. What was this confusion with uh, a cathedral? They thought it was a mosque. I don't know. Because that came from South Dunnet. Is that was that? Ask the, ask the person that made the remark. It was the man in the mark. It was an official UKIP than itself. Throwing the person up. Face, that made the, no, but, but you, throwing the person yeah, up. Trevor, That's you right. know the difference between a cathedral and a mosque. You do. UKIP is a broad church. End of. Is it a broad mosque as well, though? No, is it a broad church. Is it a broad no, synagogue, broad. or is it only a broad church? A broad church. It's not so much that the, 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 the mosque was mistaken for a church. Why should it make a difference anyway? You know, why did they have a problem? OK, you know, British citizens are Muslims, they're Jews, they're Christians. Why should it make a difference even if it was a mosque? That make a That's the point. Well, it obviously made a difference to this person with that UKIP. Well, I can't stand here and defend people that make them silly statements. As you there seem to be a lot of silly statements, though, didn't there? They're silly people. Some people that need to pull their heads out of their backsides. Yeah, you're just a bloody nationalist. A nationalist and a most dangerous breed there is anywhere in the world. I'm Trevor. I live in Manchester. Yeah. That's all. And you show what idiot foolish you are with no bloody you, you, you say, You don't you can say what even you... know your own politics because you haven't got any. Yeah, cheers. I, I think Nigel will give me a medal for today. <laughs> As the campaign hots up, Martin tries to raise the party's profile locally. He wants a volunteer to speak at a rally to ban live animal exports. It's not going to be easy. The audience of animal rights campaigners are not pro-UKIP. It is a contentious local issue. Uh, UKIP, like everybody else, I guess, would like to ban... Wouldn't it be one to ban... hey, get peers here? He was standing in Planet North, wasn't he? Oh, what a good idea. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's the man. What a good idea. Let's put Piers in the firing line. That's right. <laughs> Barrister Piers Woolcup is the party's parliamentary candidate for North Thanet. They would like us to send a representative from our party. Right. Would you be interested? Um, yes, could well be. I think it's already a policy and it'll almost certainly be in... So the can I confirm to Red to do the rally, yeah? Yeah. Ramsgate is one of the few English ports still transporting live animals from the UK to the continent. UKIP supports a ban, but the campaigners don't know that they're all on the same side. I'd like you to put your hands together and listen, just listen, any questions later, to peers from UKIP. Thank you. One of the brave, no, I said listen please. Listen to somebody that is brave enough to come. Unfortunately for Piers, his party are better known locally for supporting fox hunting. for live exports and animals. And I want to say every, to, everyone, to everyone here today, we are so grateful 
to the few people who turn up to demonstrate like this. And there are millions across the country who agree with us. So thank you very much and good luck. And what about, uh, with... what about fracking hot box hunting? I've never seen a hot box hunting. Come on, people. Please. Is your party neo-Nazi? Is your party neo-Nazi? No. Absolutely not. Is your party made up of racists? No, I, I should think not. Martin Heal, who is a councillor from Birchington, is a former Nazi. I'm sure Would he's... you agree? I, I, I don't know that. Martin Heal from Birchington, a councillor, is a former Nazi. Idiot. This party wants to bring back Clinton. What's that? Trying to overcome animosity to UKIP in Thanet is part of the branch press officer's job. Liz runs the campaign from home, along with her husband, James. But one of the things I like about UKIP is they don't have this rigid whip type system. You can actually be yourself. And they don't, they don't mind you being yourself. I cannot find an enthusiasm for the existing parties and their London-centric attitude. That, to me, is the, is the key. Liz and James share their house with the dogs and a few other guests. Well, it started quite a long time ago and it was my birthday. And Queen Victoria was still around. <laughs> Thank you. He brought me breakfast in bed, and there, sitting on the breakfast tray, was a clown. So about 1,995 <laughs> clowns later... Counting them is actually a quite a major job. We always say, oh, no, we're not going to get any more, and then you suddenly see one. And you think, oh, actually, we haven't got that in our collection. I know there are some people who really hate clowns, but we just find them very funny, and people come in and they just, they just have a smile. James has been persuaded to try and become a UKIP district councillor. City of London, cufflinks. Is this a Freeman of the City of Time? I'm not used nowadays to wearing collars and ties. Yes, but you're going, if, you get, if you get elected, you're probably going to have to do it more often. Mm. Very smart. Can I go now? Voting for Thanet District Council is on the same day as the general election. The rapidly growing local party is looking for 56 good candidates, so they can contest every ward. Can you tell us why we should select you? Because I'm polite, I'm personable, I'm cheeky, I enjoy it, and I want to do something. Yeah. I want someone to do something useful. In one way that lines up, we'd be very pleased to have you on board. That's very, very Thank kind you of you. Very Thank you very much. much. Thank it's you. delightful. I, I'm so happy. I've never actually been through this process before. This is nice to have some people saying, yeah, you appear to be half decent, let's give you a bash. We've had a marvellous Currently, there are only three UKIP district councillors. Roseanne Duncan was the first to be elected. It's been said that UKIP would like to take control of that at district council. I don't think it, it's a good thing for us to take control. I don't think we've got enough experienced councillors who are standing for election as UKIP. And if you haven't got them, you're going to fail. You're setting yourself up to fail. I have told Martin. I've told some people. They think they can do it. They can do it. They're quite convinced they can do it. And they could in the long term, but you've only got four years to make a difference. The candidates for district councillor come together for a training day. What do you look forward to most today? 
the bar opening. Welcome, Nigel, please. This is your opportunity to have some photographs with Nigel. Duncan's here to help out. So if you want photographs with Nigel, please feel free to take advantage of him over the next 30 yep. minutes. Yep. Fine. Right, there we are. I'm ready. <laughs> Let's have a little introduction then, and a welcome for Nigel. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Yes. Uh, in Kingsgate, a few residents have told me they've said, oh, we won't vote UKIP because it's a racist party. And through conversation, yeah. I've managed to convince them that I'm not a racist. Mm. But they say, well, you might not be, but we think there are some in the party. I mean, how do we counteract that? Well, prior to the European elections, the percentage of people that thought UKIP was a racist party was very small. But by the time May the 22nd came, the percentage of the population who thought UKIP was racist was very much bigger. Why? Frankly, because of the hatred of the tabloid press against us, against the party, against any comment anybody makes. So that is a problem. And, you know, and, you know, and I do accept that. It is a problem. Now I'm going to invite uh, Liz Langford-Way to come to the stage. Liz is the Thanet press officer for UKIP. Liz. If I say Marmite, what is that? It's, you love it or hate it. And that is the problem that UKIP has, that there are people who hate it. I don't quite understand why, but they do. And the problem is because there is that element, and particularly in an area uh, where Nigel is going to be so focused, everybody has to be so careful how they handle the press. I'm very happy to come along with you and you talk, but if I think you're saying the wrong, the wrong thing, you might actually get my uh, stilettos to say, actually, I always think that you are talking for your party. OK, I hope that's uh, helped. Thank and you, Anybody wants my help, please let me know. Three days later, and Liz is preparing for the holidays. Here I am, all ready for Christmas. Ta-da! <laughs> right. Roseanne has come round to leave her spaniels with Liz and James while she visits relatives. Hello, you. So off to the family. Very attached. She's such an intelligent little mm, creature, this yes. one. Yes. He's just so, a wuss. Going. He's not a wuss. He is a wuss. He's no, a real he is. <laughs> he's a sweetheart. We Don't love them. Oh, I dog. know he's a sweetheart, but he's a wuss. So, how did you find Sunday? Well, obviously there was a lot that I already knew. Mm, of course. Um, but one can always learn mm. from these sessions. Now, I have to watch my tongue because I can be very outspoken, um, and it goes against the grain to be careful what I'm saying. Um, the fundamental thing is, in our environment, it is important because anybody involved with UKIP is going to be focused on, and if they say or do the wrong thing, it's going to be blown up out of yeah. all proportion. Yeah. And mm. therefore, you just have to, as I said on Sunday, don't come up with emotive comments mm. because it will be... Re re reacted to in a way that you weren't necessarily expecting. So it's just a question of, of, of thinking first. Yes, and in thinking about it, I will say something. There is absolutely no way I'm, I'm a racist because I actually, when Nigel said about coming into the ward and taking a photograph in actually in each ward, 
My first thought was, oh, the guy that owns the post office, him and his wife, I know they vote UKIP, they'd be absolutely delighted. Um, they always talk to me, they're very supportive, etc., etc. Now, obviously, they're, I don't know whether they're Indian, Pakistan, it doesn't matter to me, but they're a lovely couple. But the only people I do have problems with are Negroes. And I don't know why. I don't know whether there's something in my psyche or whether from a, it's karma from a previous life or whether something happened to me as a very, very young person and I've drawn a veil over it, because that sometimes happens, doesn't it? But I, have, I, I, I really do have a problem with, with people with Negroid features. I really do. A friend of mine said, what would you do if I invited you to dinner and you, I put you next to, to I said, I wouldn't be there. Simple as that. I said I wouldn't be there. That's ridiculous. Isn't it? No. It's got nothing to do with people. It's got all to do with their personalities and characters. No, got I know. nothing to do with I know. facial features. I know. But I really do have a problem, and I don't know why. I wish I did. I'd like to go to somebody and perhaps, perhaps might give me a regression, so yeah. perhaps I might be able to find out why. Useful. Yeah, I once had this conversation with a guy from the 16 Plus team when I was when they first started it up, and he said, is there any particular group of people that you wouldn't consider it would be relevant for? And I said, yes, Negroes. And he said, what do you mean by Negro? What a stupid thing to say. And I said, you know, black skin, black curly hair, wide nostrils, shiny skin, that's what I mean. And he said, why? And I said, because I'm going back to the early, late 80s. I said, because there are so few in this area that I feel that at that age, t late teens, they would be bullied, they would be picked on, etc. I said, and I don't think it would be good for them. What, well, to do what? Sorry, I didn't... Oh, this was to support it accommodation. Oh, right. oh, OK. I used to say to my daughter, by way of some sort of justification, you need to remember that I was born at the late 40s, early 50s, when, especially down in Thanet, there weren't any. You know, and I wasn't brought up with them. Now, that's no justification at all. It doesn't, it doesn't answer the question, why is she like that with them and not anybody else? Really bizarre. Hmm. Don't know. No. I've got me dinner in the oven. <laughs> I'd, love, I'd love to stay and chat. <laughs> I really would, but... I don't want to spoil my meal. Right, we'll what look after the dogs. Do <laughs> no, you're not coming. No, you're staying with us. Come on. You be good boy. Smudge. He's Come here, darling. He's right, he's I'll he's keep fine. them. See you tomorrow. Yeah. Bye. Okay, honey. Yeah. Safe journey tomorrow. Roseanne leaves as if she's just had an everyday conversation. But Liz is aware of the implications of the camera recording it. <laughs> I didn't have my stiletto heels. I thought, I don't really need to have, I don't need all this. But I thought, there's nothing I can do about it at the time. It just was, and under the circumstances, I just didn't feel I could sh sort of say, shall we stop here? Um, you know, I felt rather sort of, uh, um, I thought, actually, I am going to take her aside quietly and say, I think maybe we need to tone down some of these comments for the next few months. I just sat there thinking, yes, OK, and you're a counsellor already. <sighs> Next day, Liz is trying to work out what to do. She has been told time and time again to keep her bloody mouth shut. Um, and, and, and I thought that by now the message would have got through. I mean, we're talking about, what, three days ago? I was there saying, do not say anything emotive. You, you know, be pleasant, be, but, you know, don't go off on one. 
I have to say that listening to somebody saying all that last night made me think, do I really want to be involved with these people? Because that was not what I was interested in. I was interested in um, a change of scenario because I feel that we are, that, that the EU is eroding, that's my own personal, is the, 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 the way the EU is, it is eroding our sovereignty and our ability to make decisions about all sorts of things, and it was never what we signed up to in the referendum. I did not sign up for that sort of attitude. Um, and so, you know, to a certain time, I don't want to, you know, I, I, sort of, I, I'm not saying I'm going to rush and resign tomorrow or anything like that. It's just that I slightly lost the plot about it all. Um, you know, maybe I need a couple of weeks over Christmas and New Year to, to, to make a decision. Because I just feel, um, I think we both do, don't we? Mm. That, um, you know, we're just not as ha happy about it all. Next day, the South Thanet branch Christmas party. Liz and James are still considering what to do about Roseanne. They haven't told UKIP what happened. Martin has something else to worry about. He's been approached by some radio journalists. And we said, hello, it's someone from the BBC. Just wanted to check on something. Is that Martin? Yeah. Is that Martin Hill who was in the National Front? Well, what's that got to do with anything? You know, and it just went off. And I'll be honest, I did lose it a little bit. Not too bad. I never said a word out of place, honestly. The F word never crossed my lips once, honestly. Well, possibly. I might have thought effing maggot, but I never actually said it. I guess what it is, it's the opportunity to try and embarrass Nigel Farage, who is a threat to the establishment, and the establishment, when it's threatened, resorts to all means. And I think that's where it's going. And I think it's going to get a lot worse. A lot worse. The British public love the underdog. And right now, with the kind of press and assault that we're under all the time, UKIP is the underdog. And that's why UKIP is going to be very successful, because the underdog will win. The underdog will come up and bite them on the backside. Roseanne turns up, unaware she's caused offence. Liz and James stay away. Hello. How are you? Hello, darling. Can I just say thank you for coming here tonight? We've done all we're going to do this year, but I've got to tell you, right now, it's ours. This is for us to win. It's also for us to lose. Yeah? One thing could go wrong tomorrow morning that would stop all of that. And we've just got to make sure that we don't cause that to happen. I promise I've got it zipped. <laughs> I got caught out. <laughs> Hope we go for Christmas. Enjoy it, relax. But please come back 2nd of January onwards. But please come back and give us your best. Have a great Christmas and thanks for coming and carry on drinking. <laughs> Trevor Schonk gave an interview to the radio journalists Martin had turned away. But this only leads to another national news story. The World at One, this is Mark Mardell with 45 minutes of news and comment. Trevor Shonk's passion is local politics. He didn't mention immigration immediately. But take a listen to this. The two main parties that have been running this country have made the country racist because of the influx that we've had. That's my own personal thoughts. I do believe that. I just thought, oh, not again. OK, yeah, not yet more um, sort of inappropriate phraseology. I don't want to be famous for all the wrong reasons. I don't want to be famous for all the white reasons, just, just me. And, of course, you know, I welcome these people in like I do you and anybody in there. Had a, had a wonderful discussion, all local issues. And out of that, they just blew it up out of, out of nothing. So all of a sudden I'm a centre of the wrong type of attention. Nobody wants to pick up on the real issues. Even BBC were rarely 
I mean, nobody's going to listen to Trevor, are they, on Radio 4 for an hour, God's sake. All they want to do is put those, those little lines. If the question is, do you think there is a, mm. an air of racism around Britain, mm. only an idiot would say, no, there isn't. <laughs> Tory MP, Defence Minister, says there's racism, yeah, yeah. and nobody bats an eyelid. Yeah, it's for me. It's an absolute clear demonstration of get UKIP, whatever, however you can, whatever way you can, get them. It's not about me. It's not about Stuart. It's about. Hello, the are you filming a minute? Yeah. So, right, can you stop, please? Can I talk to you, please, Chad? Yeah. And we've got to start putting constraints on all the filming of everybody in South London. The party does not want any more filming of anybody. I've been told that any interview, anything that we have filming now in South Thanet has to have constraints on it because everybody in the whole country is zoning in and we're not having it. People sometimes, when they relax, don't think about what they're saying and they need to think about what they're saying. Martin has now been told about Roseanne's statements to Liz. I had a telephone call from the chairman of Planet South asking one or two questions. And I can't remember what they were, to be honest, because the bombshell he dropped just wiped out the previous part of the conversation. And he said, well, you've been expelled from UKIP. So I said, OK. What else could I say? I still honestly believe that what I said was never at any time racist or derogatory. I used the word Negroes as you would do Asians, Chinese, Muslims, Jews. It's a description. It's not an insult. In the same way as you would say, well, what do you mean by Jewish? Well, they belong to a community, they've got a certain faith, they've usually got noses that have got a bit of a curve to them, they're, they're married women, if they're Orthodox Jews, wear wigs. It's description. I just feel betrayed by Liz. Uh, more so by Martin Heal. I feel I've been treated very badly. But then, hey ho, I'm a politician, you can't upset me. It was very upsetting. I had many sleepless nights about it. I went round to see Martin to explain what had happened because we were so concerned about it um, and you know uh, he in turn got in touch with the uh, with head office and head office felt that it was so inappropriate um, that they had to do something there and then and we were rather sad that Roseanne didn't seem to feel that she'd said anything inappropriate or that she needed to apologize to anybody including us, after all, she'd said this in our home. Unfortunately, James, he's likely to have to have operations on both his knees. If I were to be elected, I don't think I'd be in a position to actually fulfil duties properly. And I don't feel, if I've got to look after James and I have other commitments, um, that I would be able to carry on um, in my role as, as the local press officer. So, unfortunately, we've decided to um, resign from our, you know, current situation, positions within the party locally. I think it's quite sad um, to stand down from what I've done. I've in enjoyed doing it. Uh, it's called bloody good timing. <laughs> or bad timing. It <laughs> won't. Whatever. <laughs> A 
A version of Roseanne's comments have been leaked to a national newspaper. According to the account provided to the party, Ms Duncan said that she had a, quote, problem, unquote, with black people, whom she described as, quote, Negroes, unquote. So they got the bit right about I had a problem, and she got, they got the bit right about my description of them as Negroes. But what I don't understand is, as it says here, there are other people who have said, I considered, far worse things, far more derogatory, chinky, pufta, and they haven't been expelled. They've been hauled over the coals, but they haven't been expelled. There is, there's definitely a hidden agenda to this. Definitely. I don't regret saying it. I don't regret anything that's the truth. You keep supposed to be a party of free speech. In reality, it doesn't work. It's a bit hypocritical, isn't it? They look right. I don't think one person saying something is actually going to have that f much impact. Oh, absolutely. Nobody's actually said to me, oh, I'm not going to vote for UKIP now because of that. What people have said is, what a bloody clot. <laughs> yes. You know, didn't do herself any good, didn't do the party any good. Oh, good gravy needs port. That's fine. Interesting. Adventure. Yeah, it has been an adventure. Yeah, it's, no, not it's, some, been it's not something we've done before. Um, you know, it's been um, different. There you go. Thank you, darling. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, God, that's over. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs>